Hi there, I'm Amy Murray from Teaching Exceptional Kinders, and today I'd like to answer the question, what do I do after we've had a major behavior in the classroom? How can I process these big feelings with little people? Now, when you're dealing with these big behaviors and big emotions, it can be emotional for you, the student, your other students. So it's helpful to have sort of a guide to follow. So you can say, it's this is what we're doing. This is how we're going to work through this and process it. And that's where a think sheet or a behavior reflection tool is super helpful. So in my shop, I have a set of be uh, behavior reflection sheets. These behavior reflection sheets are offered in a couple of different formats, so you can choose what works best, like I mentioned earlier, for your students. So they're a bit differentiated. There's an open-ended version like this, where they answer a couple of questions and then write, or you could write, it's up to you. There is a version that has a little bit of picture support for feelings, how they felt, a place to draw what happened, and then also some open-ended things and handwriting guides. And then there is a form that I love for kindergartners that has just pictures. So all they're doing is circling. And then on the back, I have them also draw a picture to share how either they were feeling or something about what happened to help them process. So because this is my favorite for kindergarten, I'm gonna go through it a little bit, how I would use it with the kindergartner. Okay. So this form can be used independently by the student if they're up for it, like in your calming area of your classroom. If you don't have a calming area in your classroom, please check out my blog. I'll link it here below about setting up a calm down space that really works in your classroom. But so they could finish this in the calming space or you could do it together. It's totally up to you, you know them best. So at the top, they write their name, you can write the date, and it says, did your behavior make it hard for you or others to learn? And then they choose yes or no, and you need to let them choose how they feel. And then you can either fill out your own version of this or talk about if they choose no and you feel like yes, indeed it did interrupt learning, um, you can talk through that with them. And then they will choose where it happened. There are a few choices on here, the classroom, the bus. Um, I tried to put the most common places for my students, recess, the playground, uh, the gym or the cafeteria. And then there is a place for others. So you could jot it down if it was somewhere else. And then what happened? So they were noisy, had a tantrum, destroyed something, made a mess, threw things, hurt a classmate, used bad language or unkind words, or something else entirely. You could fill that in as well. And then they choose how they were feeling. And there's just a couple of feeling choices there that are usually typically associated with these behaviors. And then what they will do next time, maybe take some deep breaths, ask to take a break, think happy thoughts, go for a walk, stop and think of a better choice, like before the behavior happens and stop and count to 10. Sometimes all these little guys need to do is breathe and count and take a space, a break in the calm main space. Sometimes that's not enough. So you just have to process through. And then you'll have parents sign at the bottom. That is optional. You can get rid of that or you know white it out if you don't want it on there. I like to have that on there for documentation purposes. So mom and dad know that we went through it. And I could jot a note on the back if I wanted to tell mom and dad something else. Probably if we're filling one of those out to go home, mom and dad already got a phone call, but it's just helpful to have that for documentation purposes because you just never know what may come up. So using these tools to help you reflect on behavior, no matter which tool you choose, is really a great way to reestablish your relationship with the student and reassure the student that you still care about them. You're just not thrilled with the behavior. You can be upset with the behavior and not dislike the student. And they need to know that so you can continue your positive relationship with them. Because after all, those relationships are the foundation of positive classroom management and you're going to be lost without them. So using these reflection sheets are a great tool to help keep everybody on track. And it can be a tool to guide you back from the emotions of the event as well. All right. I'd love to hear if you give them a try. So please don't hesitate to tag me on Instagram, 
teaching exceptional kinders or send me an email if you have any questions or just want to share your experience with using think sheets it's amy at teaching exceptional kinders.com i hope this quick little video is helpful uh, please check out the other videos give me a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more until next time have an exceptional day